chapters 28 and 29. Years passed. Mig spent them scrubbing the kettle and tending the sheep and cleaning the hut and collecting innumerable, unaccountable, extremely painful clouts to the ear. In the evening, spring or winter, summer or fall, Mig stood in the field as the sun set, hoping that the royal family would pass before her again. Gore, I would like to see that little princess another time, wouldn't I? And her little pony too, with his tippy-toed feet. This hope, this wish, that she would see the princess again was lodged deep in Mig's heart. Lodged firmly right next to it was the hope that she, Miggery, Sal, could someday become a princess herself. The first of Mig's wishes was granted in a roundabout way when King Philip outlawed soup. The king's men were sent out to deliver the grim news and to collect from the people of the kingdom of Dor their kettles, their spoons, and their bowls. Reader, you know exactly how and why this law came to pass. You would not be as surprised as uncle was when on one Sunday, a soldier of the king knocked on the door of the hut that Mig and uncle and the sheep shared and announced that soup was against the law. How's that? said uncle. By royal order of King Philip, repeated the soldier. I am sent here to tell you that soup has been outlawed in the kingdom of Dor. You will, by order of the king, never again consume soup, nor will you think of it or talk about it. And I, as one of the king's loyal servants, am here to take from you your spoons, your kettle, and your bowls. But that can't be, said uncle. Nevertheless, it is. What will we eat? And what will we eat with? Cake, suggested the soldier, with a fork. And wouldn't that be lovely, said uncle, if we could afford to eat cake? The soldier shrugged. I am only doing my duty. Please hand over your spoons, your bowls, and your kettle. Uncle grabbed hold of his beard. He let go of his beard and grabbed the hair on his head. Unbelievable, he shouted. I suppose next the king will be wanting my sheep and my girl, seeing as those are the only possessions I have left. Do you own a girl, said the soldier. I do, said uncle, a worthless one, but still she is mine. Ah, said the soldier, that I am afraid is against the law. No human may own another in the kingdom of Dor. But I paid for her fair and square with a good laying hen and a handful of cigarettes and a blood red tablecloth. No matter, said the soldier, it is against the law to own another. Now, you will hand over to me, if you please, your spoons, your bowls, your kettle, and your girl. Or if you choose not to hand over these things, then you will come with me to be imprisoned in the castle dungeon. Which will it be? And that is how Miggery Sow came to be sitting in a wagon full of soup-related items next to a soldier of the king. Do you have parents, said the soldier. I will return you to them. Eh? Amma, shouted the soldier. Dead, said Mig. Your pa, shouted, shouted the soldier. I ain't seen him since he sold me. Right, I'll take you to the castle then. Gore, said Mig, looking around the wagon in confusion. You want me to paddle? To the castle, shouted the soldier. I'll take you to the castle. The castle? Where the itty bitty princess lives? That's right. Gore, said Mig. I am to be a princess too someday. That's a fine dream, said the soldier. He clucked to the horse and tapped the reins and they took off. 
I'm happy to be going, said Mig, putting a hand up and gently touching one of her cauliflower ears. Might just as well be happy, seeing as it doesn't make a difference to anyone but you, if you are or not, said the soldier. We will take you to the castle, and they will set you up fine. You no longer will be a slave. You will be a paid servant. Eh? said Mig. You will be a servant, shouted the soldier. Not a slave. Gore, said Mig, satisfied. A servant? I will be. Not a slave. She was 12 years old. Her mother was dead. Her father had sold her. Her uncle, who wasn't her uncle at all, had clouded her until she was almost deaf. And she wanted more than anything in the world to be a little princess wearing a golden crown and riding a high stepping white horse. Reader, do you think that is a terrible thing to hope when there is really no reason to hope at all? Or is it, as the soldier said about happiness, something that you might just as well do since in the end, it really makes no difference to anyone but you. Chapter 29. Migri Sow's luck continued. On her first day on the job as a castle servant, she was sent to deliver a spool of red thread to the princess. Mind, said the head of the serving staff, a dower woman named Louise. She is royalty, so you must make sure you curtsy. How's that? shouted Mig. You must curtsy, shouted Louise. Gore, said Mig. Yes, am She took the spool of thread from Louise and made her way up the golden stairs to the princess's room, talking to herself as she went. Here I am, off to see the princess, me, Miggery Sow, seeing the princess up close and personal like. And first off, I must curtsy because she is the royalty. At the door to the princess's room, Mig had a sudden crisis of confidence. She stood a moment, clutching the spool of thread and muttering to herself. Now, how did that go, she said? Give the princess the thread and then give her a curtsy? No, no. First the curtsy and then the thread. That's it. Gore, that's right. That's the order. Start with the curtsy and finish with the thread. She knocked at the princess's door. Enter, said the pea. Mig, hearing nothing, knocked again. Enter, said the pea. And Mig, still hearing nothing, knocked yet again. Maybe, she said to herself, the princess ain't to home. But then the door was flung wide and there was the princess herself, staring right at Miggery Sow. Gore, said Mig her mouth hanging open. Hello, said the pea. Are you the new serving maid? Have you brought me my thread? Curtsy, I must, shouted Mig. She gathered her skirts, dropped the spool of thread, stuck a foot out and stepped on the spool, rocked back and forth what, for what seemed like quite a long time, both to the watching princess and the rocking Mig. And finally, fell to the floor with a miggish thud. Whoopsie, said Miggery Sow. The pea could not help it. She laughed. That's all right, she said to Mig, shaking her head. It's the spirit of things that counts. How's that? shouted Mig. In the spirit of the thing that counts, shouted Pea. Thank you, miss, said Mig. She got slowly to her feet. She looked at the princess. She looked down at the floor. First the curtsy, then the thread, Mig muttered. Pardon, said P. Gore, said Mig, the thread. She dropped to her hands and knees to locate the spool of thread. When she found it, she stood back up and offered it to P. I brought you your thread, didn't I? Lovely, said the princess as she took the thread from Mig. Thank you so much. I cannot seem to hold on to a spool of red thread. Everyone I have disappears somehow. Are you making a thing? 
asked Meg, squinting at the cloth in the pea's hand. I am making a history of the world, my world, said the pea, in tapestry, see? Here is my father, the king, and he is playing the guitar because that is something he loves to do and does quite well. And here is my mother, the queen, and she is eating soup because she loved soup. Soup? Gore! That's against the law! Yes, said the princess. My father outlawed it because my mother died while she was eating it. Your ma's dead? Yes, said the pea. She died just last month. She bit her bottom lip to stop it from trembling. Ain't that the thing, said Mig. My ma is dead too. How old were you when she died? Bold was I, said Mig, taking a step back away from the princess. I'm sorry then. No, no, how old? How old were you, shouted the pea. Not but six, said Mig. I'm sorry, said the princess. She gave Mig a quick, deep look of sympathy. How old are you now? Twelve years. So am I, said the princess. We're the same age. What is your name, she shouted. Miggery, Miggery Sow, but most just call me Mig. And I saw you once before, princess. You passed me by on a little white horse. On my birthday it was, and I was in the field, and Uncle Sheep, and it was sunset time. Did I wave to you? asked the princess. Eh? Did I wave? shouted the pea. Yes, nodded Mig. But you didn't wave back, said the princess. I did, said Mig, only you didn't see. Some day. I will sit on a little white horse and wear a crown and wave. Someday, said Mig, and she put up a hand to touch her left ear. I will be princess too. Really, said the pea, and she gave Mig another quick, deep look, but said nothing else. When Mig finally made her way back down the golden stairs, Louise was waiting for her. How long, she roared, did it take you to deliver a spool of thread to the princess? Too long, I guess. That's right, said Louise, and she gave Mig a good clout to the ear. You are not destined to be one of our star servant servants. That is already abundantly clear. No, ma'am, said Mig. That's all right, though, because I aim to be a princess. You, a princess, don't make me laugh. This reader wasn't a little joke on Louise's part, as she was not a person who laughed, ever. Not even at a notion as ridiculous as Miggery Sow becoming a princess. <laughs>